Workplace discrimination can have serious legal consequences, especially when it involves supervisors. But who exactly qualifies as a supervisor under Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964? This is a crucial distinction in employment law that can significantly impact liability in discrimination cases. Title VII is a federal law that prohibits employment discrimination based on race, color, religion, sex, and national origin. It applies to employers with 15 or more employees, including state and local governments. Under Title VII, a supervisor is generally defined as someone with the authority to take tangible employment actions against other employees. Tangible employment actions include hiring, firing, promoting, demoting, or significantly changing an employee's benefits or compensation. The classification of an employee as a supervisor is important because it affects an employer's liability in discrimination cases. If a supervisor engages in discriminatory behavior, the employer is automatically liable for that conduct. This is different from cases involving non-supervisory employees, where the employer may have more defenses available. For example, if a manager with the power to hire and fire employees refuses to promote someone based on their race, the company would likely be held liable under Title VII. However, if a co-worker without such authority makes discriminatory comments, the company might not be automatically liable depending on how it responds to the situation. It's worth noting that the definition of a supervisor under Title VII is narrower than in some other contexts. An employee who directs daily work activities but lacks the power to take tangible employment actions may not be considered a supervisor under this law. Understanding who qualifies as a supervisor under Title VII is crucial for both employers and employees. For employers, it underscores the importance of carefully selecting and training individuals in supervisory roles. For employees, it clarifies who has the authority to make significant employment decisions and who may be held accountable for discriminatory actions in the workplace. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more legal insights. Have questions or topics you'd like us to cover? Drop them in the comments below. See you next time.